Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the mixing style of mixer Chad Blake. It's coming up next on Everything Music. Okay, so I've had a lot of people ask me to spotlight a bunch of producers and mixers. I've already done Andy Wallace, Brendan O'Brien, and Randy Staub. Today I'm focusing on Chad Blake. Now Chad is one of my favorite mixers. He's really got an incredibly great original style. I got a chance to work with him on a project one time. I never met him in person. He was mixing it at his studio in Wales. He lives in Wales. Um, and I got to talk to him quite a bit over the course of about three weeks or so over the phone. Really fascinating. He was he was incredibly forthcoming with ideas, just like he is when you look at videos of him talking about what he does. Anytime you see an interview with him, he basically talks about the fact that he experiments and just tries to come up with the best sound possible. He just uses his ear, essentially. I wouldn't say he necessarily has a formula like some of the other mixers do, even though he has things that he likes to do that he's talked about in interviews and then he told me about. So let's listen to a couple examples of some of Chad's work and see what we're talking about. Okay, the first thing I'm going to play is a record that Chad mixed. I believe he engineered and produced it by Doyle Bramhall II, which came out in, I want to say 96 or so. This is called Jelly Cream, the record. This is Snake Charmer. <laughs> That is a great drum sound. How does Chad get these drum sounds? Listen, listen to another drum sound from the same record. You notice the kick's not quite as loud as it is on Snake Charmer. That was called I'm the One. Here's Snake Charmer, listen. Kick, kick's got a little bit more oomph to it, a little more bottom end. It's actually just louder than it is. These are both from the same record. Let's move on to um, a record he did in the mid-90s also by Los Lobos that he mixed. This is uh, from Colossus. This song's called Revolution. Incredibly cool drum sound. Now, what can you tell from that? Well, to me it sounds like an obvious sample on the kick drum because kick drums don't sound like that, especially they, uh, it's really clean, it's really separated. Listen again. Now you can hear the hi-hat, you can hear the hi-hat has distortion on it. The snare has distortion on it. The kick though is, has a lot of definition. The, the length of it is very consistent sounding, which you wouldn't have, uh, and you wouldn't have it that separated, because uh, you'd have bleed on it from the other mics. So I know that, that Chad uses samples. He told me he uses samples. Um, he doesn't use samples on everything, and he uh, does some incredibly great stuff with distortion and kick drums. He can get these massively big kick drum sounds without doing that by using some phase tricks and using distortion plugins or distortion uh, boxes. You'll see him use the old Sans Amp foot pedals or he uses the Sans Amp PS1 plugin. So anyways, I'm going to show you a couple ideas that Chad told me that he does and kind of how he does them. But let's listen to a couple other things because one of these other ones here is... This is also Los Lobos. And the, the uh... What's the use in trying? That amazingly great drum sound, listen to it. Now, 
Now, I can't believe that that's not a sample on the kick drum either because it's uh, it's so clean sounding. Really incredibly great groove and sound. The hi hat. Chad is really great at blending the snare drum and the hi-hat. He's got this big bottom end on the kick drum, and he can make that meld into one, the snare and the hi-hat and the kick and the groove. It doesn't sound all separated. It just really sounds like one unit together, which gives it a lot of... Um, I think it, it makes it glues, glues it together and makes it groove properly. Let's check out another one. You guys will know this one. Now that drum sound is really recognizable. You've heard Chad say, I'm sure, that he got the tracks, and I, I saw an interview where he was talking about this, he got the tracks uh, from these guys, from Black Keys. There was only about 10 tracks per song. He told me that. He said it was done on tape. I think they used the house drum kit at Muscle Shoals, uh, which had, I had a friend that worked there, actually. He told me the house drum kit had these incredibly dead black um, uh, kind of two-ply oil heads on there that they used to have, old school, totally dead. Everything was done to tape, but I think there's one overhead and just there's very, very few tracks to the songs. So he told me that, I'm not sure if this is common knowledge or not, anyways, that he started going in a direction with the songs and started getting more and more aggressive because that's what they wanted him to do. And that's those drums have those those are samples all over there. It sounds totally organic because of this distortion. But the drum sound is completely manufactured on there. Once again you can hear that distortion on the snare and on the hi hat really glued together, but the But that kick drum is super separated, once again. And he told me he used samples on there, on, on that whole record. I don't know if about every song, but songs like that, yes. Uh, he's got so many great sounding records, and he really, his kick drum sounds are massively big. He's got massively big low end. The low mid punch on his records sound great. It's one of my favorites. I mean, he's absolutely extraordinarily good and original. And he uses his ear. Um, one of the things he told me is that he has these monitors. I think they're called Lin 328s. He told me at the time, this is, this is probably five years ago that I worked with him, and he said that he paid $16,000 for him, I believe. And I remember looking up the company. It's a hi-fi audio company. But he said that the speakers were could reproduce those low frequencies at a low volume. I think he said that at low volumes, he could get this really huge bottom end, and it was very accurate and translated from place to place. Now, Chad works all in the box. He's been doing this for years now. He uses all plugins. When I asked him about using reverb, the record that we, that we worked together on had printed reverb, because I had heard that Chad doesn't work, doesn't use reverb. And the reverb he uses is Altiverb. That's pretty much what he said. We provided bass amps with the recording, but he told me that he hasn't used a bass amp in 15 years. That was five years ago. So he just uses the DI because he feels like he can shape it the way he likes to. And he uses Sans Amp on the DI. Let me show you a couple things here about he told me that he's doing with what plugins. Okay, so I've taken some of Chad's principles Took a drum track and I'm going to implement some of these. So, one of the first things that he does is to uh, put a an MC4000 McDSP compressor on his mix bus. He told me that he mixes into that. And if you read any of the articles about him, he says that. So that's usually the first thing that he'll put on there. Now, one of the reasons that he likes to do this, I think, is because, um, and I think he told me this, is so he can have more ability to shape the mix EQ-wise 
that's usually why you use a multiband compressor anyways. Um, and these are really aggressive sounding. They can get very loud, the McDSP. I, I'm a huge fan of McDSP. I've been using it since 1999. So I have that on, and before I have that is the plug-in called Dark Essence, which is by Crane Song. So this is essentially like a tape emulator, okay? Now, we're gonna put these things in and out. I also have this thing called Magic AB on here, which is a great plug-in if you haven't seen it. It's a really great plug-in to have because you can AB your mixes. If you go after your mix bus compression on the, on the master fader, you can put in up to nine different samples in of music. So here's one of them. If I hit the B button, and I hit any of these, any of these will be So what we're going to do is we're going to try and match up the drums as best we can, okay, using some of the principles that he uses. Let me talk about some of them. Okay, so we have the uh, the ML4 here, ML4000, what did I call it, MC4000, I'm sorry. We have the ML4000 that's on the mix bus, okay, this is a mastering limiter, multi-band mastering limiter, four channels. Okay, so I'm going to play the, my raw drum tracks from a tune that I recorded, uh, and then I'm going to gradually put these plugins on to show you kind of conceptually what he's doing. So here's my plugins going through the. That's through the ML4, ML4000. Here's without it. Huge difference, okay? Huge difference in volume and in tone. Let me put it back on. My kick drum has a lot of low end. My kick is a combination of the kick out and the kick in mic that I've summed together. The kick in mic was, was an RE20. The kick out mic was a was an old AKG D30. Okay, old Led Zeppelin, big, big, huge dynamic mic. Great sounding. It gives you that Zeppelin kick out sound. So let me play you some of these so sounds. Now I have a little bit of gating on it to, to um, just to take some of the cymbal wash away because there was a lot of really loud cymbals. So I have an SSL compressor on it, which I am using to just gate slightly. And I have a little bit of five, 5K or so on it to add a little top end. If I take it off, it's not that big a deal, but I like it. I think it's good right there. And I'm adding a slight bit of 50 hertz, even though it has a tremendous amount of bottom end. Okay, let me hear. Let me see my snare. That's my snare with no compression or anything. I have an SSL compressor, which Chad says that he likes to use on the snare. I'm. I have a little bit of compression going on. Very little compression. Here's my hi hat. Now my hi hat I have panned up the center. I think one of uh, Chad's things that he likes to do is um, is to have, you know, he, like a lot of the old guys, they're kind of really left, right, center guys. LCR is what they used to call it, the groove. And here's the overheads, okay? Really good balance. I have an SSL channel strip on it. That's with, without it. I might boost a little bottom end on it, I think, too. Try it again. About 100 hertz. I'm gonna boost a little bit in there. Thicken it up just a little bit. I don't have any compression on it or anything, okay? And then I have a room mic. Now here's the room mic by itself with no EQ or compression. Just a mono room mic, but then I have a compressor on it. I'm using a Kush Audio UBK-1, which is a really great compressor. It's got five different compression algorithms in it, and it's got a tape simulator, and it's got a density button on it. So it's got saturation, compression, and density. And it's really, really versatile, and it sounds great. I don't know why m more people don't know this. It's got all these mix knobs on it too, but. Here's without it. 
It adds a tremendous amount of bottom end too. This is the the closest thing that I've seen that, that gets to the uh, TG1 that Chandler makes a copy of that sounds fantastic. This this is the only plug-in to me that 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 does a, a great. Honestly, that's almost the whole drum sound there. That's one mono mic. I have an EQ on it. I have the EQ on there in, in case I want to take some bottom end out or if I want to change phase. Uh, that's one of the nice things about having an EQ is that it's got a phase button on there. I'm just using the standard Pro Tools EQs that all you guys are going to have if you have Pro Tools. I think that that mic is a um, custom ribbon mic that I had that a friend of mine made for me and gave it to me for free. That has a, a it has a little bit of a buzz to it, although you can't really hear it on here. But it is so fat on the bottom end. Now, if I were to A B with with. Uh, Already you can tell that my my mix is not nearly squished enough because I don't have a drum sub on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my drum sub. Now, Chad told me that he used to use a, C, um, a C4 multiband compressor that, that Waze makes. And then I believe that he uses the, uh, the uh, same McDSP ML4000 on the drum sub. So I'm going to put that on now. Okay, so I'm getting somewhere now. If I go to here... Okay. One of, the, one of the things I really like about that... Is that his kick drum has this really long over ring to it, okay? But it could very well be a sample on it. Um, the only way I can get my kick drum to have that kind of length, if I just take my kick out mic by itself, it doesn't. It still doesn't have that kind of length. What I'm doing here is I'm adding a sample to it that basically gives it a... I forgot my dark essence on the mix here. I think Sapphire sounds good. Now, my drums are a little brighter. I've got really no EQ on the drum sub, so I'm gonna actually EQ the mix bus a little bit. Cause I have a couple. I'm gonna go back closer to flat. I have a little bit of upper mids added. Better already. Hear the ring of the snare? One of the cool things about the ring of the snare uh, is that you can tell it has a sans amp on it. I can tell that. And that's kind of Chad's thing is the sans amp. He uses a sans amp, he uses decapitator. He uses, uh, you know, some other distortion plugins to the Devil Loak made by um, uh, Sound Toys. Uh, I have the PS1 here, and so I have a couple things I'm going to do right now. I'm going to add some distortion to the kick drum. Okay, so check this out now. I'm going to add the distortion here to the kick, and you'll hear a difference. Here's without it. Now I'm going to add it. Here, without it. Okay, you can hear the length of the kick, but you can also tell it's out of phase. Now, my phase button is in. When you add distortion to a sound, it very often will change the phase on it, just by adding distortion, because it, it changes the way the waveform is, is affected. I have it going to a mono channel, an aux send, with a, what I call kick distortion. I have the PS1 first, and then I have the EQ, the standard Pro Tools EQ right after. Now, listen, I'm gonna play it with it on. I'm gonna flip the phase. That's without the phase flip. 
Now I'm gonna move the uh You can if you move the low and high pass filters around, sometimes you can add a whole sub octave on the kick drum. That's where he's getting this big, big bottom. Okay, and sometimes I'll put a time adjuster on as well. You can send it from an aux, you can copy the track and then slide the, uh, you can delay the track or you can actually delay the aux also. I'm not doing that right now, I don't need to do that because this is really kind of giving me the desire to. By sliding around the high pass filter, meaning, meaning the filter of the low end, with the, fa with the phase flipped after the distortion, this is on the kick aux with the sans amp. Okay, so let's check this out. What happens when I flip the phase? Okay. Watch this. You hear it go out of phase. That's back in phase. Then if I do this. It really kind of... Uh, Really change the timbre of the kick. And then I'm adjusting the distortion, the crunch, which has a huge effect on it as well. So if I go back and AB it again. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing with the snare. I've got snare distortion. I've got a snare EQ and I have a snare sans amp. Okay, I go like this. So you see the sans amp and the EQ. And I just turn that channel on. That's, right. That's without it. Now I'm going to turn the. the uh, It gives a little more length to the snare. And then... All this, all this changing of phase and EQ really affects the sound of the uh, kick drum as well. The last thing I'm going to do here because we're only going to talk about the drums on this video. I'm trying to keep my videos a little bit uh, shorter. So the last thing I have is I have a drum ambience track, okay? So I'm, I'm using an Echo Boy uh, with the Echoplex setting on it. I'm going to turn it on right now, so it's off. You can hear it. You hear it there. It's just adding a little bit. Now his track is actually a little bit quieter, quieter than mine, and that's a mastered track there. Um, his track is slightly more compressed still. I, I, I could hit the drums a little bit harder right now, and, uh, and I think it would have that desired effect, but um, I'm gonna save that for when we introduce the bass in there as well. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Rick Beato. This is Everything Music.